Mike, we just got the approval last night. We'll be broadcasting the Boca Raton Bowl on December 22nd between Temple and Toledo, and I can't wait to get out of Philadelphia and go down to sunny Florida, put my feet in the sand, and uh, just have a really good time sitting on the beach before we get ready for Temple and Toledo. And, of course, working as well because we got to cover the game and uh, talk to Matt Rule and go to all the press conferences as well. But right now we're going to try to bring some of that warmth into Philadelphia as we're now joined by the morning anchor at WPTV and a Temple alum, that is Mike Trim. Mike, thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, glad to be talking to you. How cold is it in Philly right now? Uh, I would say it's probably like 39 degrees, right, Mike? <laughs> I think, I think yeah. since we're in studio now, it's up to 42, 43, <laughs> maybe. So it was cold here this week because it dipped uh, down to the low 60s. So, yeah, so that means you all have the North Faces there. That's something I, I never get uh, when going to Florida. It's 60 degrees and people wearing North Faces. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's certainly uh, different than when I went to Temple. So you got to be on cloud nine, right? Because Temple now is at 10-3 uh, and three on their season, and now they're going to be playing a bowl game right in your backyard in Boca Raton. That's got to be perfect for you, right? I, oh, absolutely. I mean, since the announcement, I, I've been, you know, fielding calls from so many people, uh, you know, that I went to school with that are coming down and, uh, you know, obviously cheering for that win against Houston. But I knew, you know, once we lost that it could set up perfectly. I cannot believe that. I mean, I can't believe it panned out this way. So I'm going and, you know, I even have to anchor the morning show here on the NBC affiliate uh, of Bo not only Boca Raton, but West Palm Beach um, the next morning. So be I'm going to be going on pure caffeine the next day. <laughs> so you're actually from Missouri. How did a guy from Missouri end up at Temple? You know, I went into the Navy right after uh, right after high school, and I, I wanted to to boil it down. I wanted to go to a, a big school in a big skid, big city with a good broadcast journalism program. You know, to really uh, get your feet wet in the business, and uh, it worked out perfectly at Temple. You know, I interned at the um, uh, what was the WB affiliate there, um, and it just took off from there. You know, your connections in the TV industry just kind of uh, help you out. And from there, it was Binghamton, New York, to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, to here, where I am now. And I, I think I found a good place to stay because of the weather. Well, thank <laughs> you for your service, first off. But how does a guy go from being in the uh, Navy to wanting to be in television? How did that go about? I, you know, always wanted to do it, uh, even as a kid in elementary school. And, uh, you know, didn't come from the richest family, so I uh, just really grinded it out and knew I had to go into the military to pay for school. Uh, or that, was, that was one way, at least. And uh, loved my time at Temple. I mean, I wanted to have that four-year college experience. So after the Navy uh, went, uh, I was in a, a Sigma Pi was a fraternity at the time, not on campus anymore. But, uh, you know, lived right there in Johnson and Hardwick, had the great college experience. And uh, I wish I could say I had a great college football viewing experience when I was there, but it wasn't so great when I was there. <laughs> yeah, the year you graduated in 2005, the team was on the verge of getting dropped. People were talking about that, and they had zero wins that season. So to see this progress now of college game day, uh, multiple games on ABC, what's that like for you as an alumni? Uh, one, one word, it's surreal. I mean, um, and boy, we, we fought Notre Dame hard that game, too. I, uh, unbelievable. I mean, I can't believe that I'm going to be able to see in person the chance for the, the program to win 11 games for the first time in school history because, you know, back, back on campus in you know, 2001 and I graduated in 2005. I, you know, I hate to say it, but the, the football program didn't really get a lot of respect on, on campus. You know what I mean? You'd be at parties and be like, you play for what team? You know, shouldn't you be practicing right now? You guys haven't won a game all season. Uh, obviously, flip side now and, and uh, so proud. I mean, they're doing what they couldn't do in, in 10 years of advertising, having these big games, you know, for the university and, and what it means and what it means to be in a Temple alum. And you know this, that Matt Rule got a, uh, a pay raise and he's going to be here uh, through 2021 through the contract. And who knows if he's going to stay here that long, but it's good that he's going to be here as the football coach next year. And uh, Temple in that contract report by Pete Thamel of SI, uh, there's been reports that they're going to uh, improve the facilities here at Temple, which are already some pretty good facilities as now people speculate that that's going to be an on-campus stadium. But you are a Missouri guy. Missouri did interview uh, Matt Rule for their head football coaching job. I think that you're the one to thank for Matt Rule uh, really not going out there and taking that job since your Missouri ties, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, I actually do follow him on Twitter, and we've direct messaged back and forth. I'm like, hey, anytime you uh, need to use an example of a Temple alum being successful here in South Florida with these South Florida recruits, you know, just point to me and thank <laughs> me for that. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, the only, like, Mizzou fan, I grew up a Mizzou fan. 
obviously, but then went to Temple, so a huge Temple fan now. Probably only the guy that was a fan of both schools. So really weird to see that play out. But glad he's still at Temple for sure. We're talking to Mike Trim, who is with the NBC affiliate WPTV in West Palm Beach, also a Temple graduate. And, you know, Mike, for, forget about the politics for just a quick second and even the logistics. What would an on-campus stadium mean for you personally as an alum of the school? Well, I know I would fly back for the first game. That's a no-brainer. And, uh, you know, it's not only me here. Uh, I also have a, one of our main photographers in the morning. His name's Rob Moore. Uh, he graduated from Temple as well. We are just gaga over Temple football right now. And I, um, I think it would work out, you know, obviously um, – I've seen the comparisons to like a stadium and Akron, the Akron Zips, uh, you know, how that's kind of built in a downtown area. But Philly's much different. It's a sports city. I think people would get behind it. Um, you know, we, we'll see how the crowds would be for, you know, um, a two-lane game, you know, versus a, a big game. And, and would they still play the big games on campus with the Penn States, with the Notre Dames visit if we had one on campus? But I think overall a win-win for the community. It'll create jobs. So uh, I think that's the next step for Temple football, and I, I think that's what most people want. A large reason for this turnaround is yeah, this, this guy who's been here for four years, every single year has led the team in tackles, specifically this season, has led the team in tackles every single week, and that's Tyler Medikevich. Fitting that he's playing his last game as a Temple Allen. It's actually his first bowl game. You know, we, Zach and I are around here 24-7. We're hearing about Tyler Medikevich, specifically on campus. What is his name like, even in Florida? Is he getting the national recognition you think he deserves, especially after winning the Bronco Nagurski Award? You know, I still don't think he does get the credit he deserves because, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I don't think he was even nominated as a finalist for the line, uh, the best linebacker of the year award. The Buckus the Award. Right. Wasn't, wasn't even nominated for that, correct, in the finalists? Yeah, no, um, he wasn't. He wasn't. So, you know, that in itself, you know, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, I, trust me, I'm the biggest uh, megaphone for him down here saying you got to watch this guy. If you like football, you'll like watching Tyler Matikiewicz. Um So I, I still think he's not quite – I mean, the Notre Dame game kind of helped him. But, you know, if he had another year, possibly. But I still think – and he should probably carry it as a chip on his shoulder um, to go out and win this game um, – that people still don't know the Tyler Matikiewicz that we know as Temple fans. Now, Temple, on the opposite side, they struggled to move the ball once they were in Houston's territory last week. What do you think they can do this upcoming week if they want to beat a skilled Toledo team so that they can win that bowl game? So Toledo, correct me if I'm wrong, still has the Alabama transfer at quarterback, correct? Yes, that is accurate. All right. So, you know, we've done excellent against the uh, typical passing quarterbacks, uh, drop back, uh, if you will, pro style, like the Hackenbergs, the um, – Everybody, we've had trouble with the mobile quarterbacks like Ward Jr. last week, um, and you know I know Matt Rule and, and everybody and Coach Snow they're gonna they're gonna shore that up. So I think we're gonna have a little more success against Toledo here. I don't think they're much of a running quarterback team. So you know you get a guy in a pocket against our D line and and Matt Akavich when he's blitzing. I mean that spells trouble for any offense. Yeah, and, and they do have a good run game, but you're right. It's not more of a mobile quarterback, which really, given this team, struggles this year when I think they were only allowing into the Houston game 117.4 yards per game on the ground, as we're talking to Mike Trim, who's a morning anchor at WPTV. And while we we're on the topic of the stadium, let's bring this up. FAU is where they're going to play. Uh, that seems like it's a beautiful stadium that seats 30,000 people. Uh, what can you tell me about that stadium living in the area? Uh, you're right. It's a, it's actually a really nice stadium, and I think this bowl, you know, as a whole, even after this game, is going to gain some steam as a, as a destination people want to go to. I actually did the live report when they broke ground on it, um, and, and just a, a little history behind it. Howard Schnellenberger, who of course you know won at Miami, um, was a coach at FAU, so he played a big, big part in getting that stadium push, uh, you know, to build it on campus. And they not only built, uh, and it could, you know, bode well for Temple, too, and expand the campus, it not only built the stadium here at FAU, but it also uh, included dorms, uh, a few restaurants as well. So that was an addition um, that was really welcome. It's a funny thing, and I, I'm not sure if the nickname still sticks, but they wanted it to be called Between the Palms, you know, the palm trees, uh, instead of Between the Hedges, if you will, in Georgia. So that's a nickname. But it, it is a great stadium. It's still new. Um, I haven't heard many complaints about it, and, and I'd tell you if I knew it. <laughs> that's funny, because I used to eat at Howard's Restaurant uh, in Boca, because I have family there, and um, I always remember going to that <laughs> restaurant when I'm a kid. So while we're on the topic of food, since we are going uh, to Boca, give us some of your best uh, eating recommendations down there 
So, okay, Boca, you know, it, it's a hodgepodge. You can you can find good food anywhere. Um, as far as the local appeal for food, it's not like Philly. I, I got to tell you, it's just not like Philly. So let me get back to you that one on Twitter, and we'll, we'll put that up. <laughs> so when you were in Philly, where'd you get your cheesesteaks from? Uh, you know, I was a big gems guy, but Pat's, if uh, we actually one night after a, you know, a long study session, wink, wink, walk to Pat's and back from campus. Um, so we used to do the Pat's walk. Uh, so, so more of a Pat's and gems guy, big time. Well, Mike, this was a whole lot of fun. We appreciate you coming on today for a few minutes, and uh, we'll see you at the bowl game, all right? Hey, looking forward to seeing you guys. Looking forward to a big Temple win.